So here's some help for the experiment for post-lab. The first question says give three possible errors during the lab and the effect each error would have on your results. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you write a step number from the procedure for the step where the error could occur. Then you want to describe the error and finally, you want to describe the effect that that error would have on the results. Would it make you think you would have more water in the hydrate or less water in the hydrate? So you want to do those three things when answering this question. The second question says, will your percent water loss be more or less in the following cases? And it gives you five different cases. So let's do the, uh, approach these one at a time. So first, the question is asking about the water loss. So let's just review quickly what's happening. We take an initial mass, and we assume that the initial mass is just our hydrate, that salt that we got from underneath the hood, the fume hood. We heat that up in the crucible, and whatever water was sticking to the salt would evaporate away so that our final mass is less. So our initial mass is the salt plus the water that's making it the hydrate. We heat it up, and the final mass is just the salt, and so it's less. So in this question, we're going to see how either the initial mass changes or the final mass changes in uh, each of these scenarios, because the difference between them is really what we take to be the water loss. You have the initial mass, you heat it up, the water evaporates away, and you're left with just the salt as the final mass. That water evaporating away is the difference between the initial and final mass. So if that difference is bigger, then the water loss will be bigger. And if that difference is less, then what we interpret as the water loss will be less. So we're going to see how that changes in each of these scenarios. Okay, first scenario, you forgot to fire the crucible before starting the experiment. So you fire the crucible to clean off any impurities from the crucible, whether it's water that's sticking to the crucible, moisture, or if it's some other impurity. And so if you don't do that, you're not just going to have your hydrate in the crucible, you'll have your hydrate plus the impurities. So the initial mass is going to be bigger than, you would, than it would be if you just had the hydrate. So then the question is, how does that affect the difference between the initial and the final mass? which is the percent water loss. Is that bigger or is it smaller than it would have been? For B, it says you covered the crucible throughout the entire heating. So that doesn't affect the initial mass at all. The initial mass would stay the same. But if you cover the crucible, then when you evaporate the water from the salt, it'll just recondense on the lid of the crucible and drip back down into the salt. So the final mass will be bigger because the water wasn't allowed to escape from the crucible. So the question is, how does that affect the difference between the initial and the final mass, which is the percent water loss? The third scenario says the hydrated salt is contaminated with an anhydrous salt. Hydrated means that the salt has water sticking to it, and anhydrous means that, that it doesn't. And so here, this is affecting the initial mass. When we first get the salt from under the hood, we assume that it's completely hydrated, that it has a bunch of water sticking to it. But if some of it doesn't have water sticking to it, then the initial mass is really going to be less than it would have been if there is water sticking to it, because water adds mass. And so how would that affect the difference between the initial and the final mass? which is the percent water loss. That's what you want to answer in this question. For D, it says you ended up heating the salt a little too much and it decomposed and vaporized. So that is not affecting the initial mass, that's affecting the final mass. Not just the water is evaporating, but also some of the salt. So the final mass is really going to be smaller than it otherwise would have been. So what is that going to do to the difference between the initial and final mass, which is what we interpret as the percent water loss? Finally, it says, because you were running short of time, you did not heat the crucible with the salt twice. So every time you heat the crucible, a little more water evaporates. 
So if you didn't heat the salt twice, less water is going to evaporate and the final mass is going to be a little bigger than it otherwise would have been because it still has some water sticking to it. So how does that affect the percent water loss, which is the difference between the initial and the final mass? That's what you'd want to answer here.